Deputy Bell, are we ready out there? Ready and waiting. Go ahead and go stop. And I'm going to show you the plan. Is he? Is he? Oh, you get two? Is he far away? Does that you have? Please rise. 72nd District Court for St. Clair County, State of Michigan is now in session. The Honorable Michael Howell is presiding. Please turn off all cell phones and pagers. Thank you very much, Ms. In regards to this, uh, ma'am, uh, I'm going to call this first case here today of Hillary uh, Mason. This is Court File 15P03371FY. I'm going to start off, uh, ma'am, what's your name over at the jail? Hillary Mason. All right. Ms. Mason, today is a date and time for what's called a uh, arraignment. And basically, at the arraignment stage, I'm going to start off by asking whether you've seen a sheet of paper with your rights on it. Yes, I have. Did you read that over and did you sign that over at the jail today? 
Uh, yesterday I did, yes. Okay. With regards to those rights, those are the rights that you have today. Those are also the rights that you have to the entire criminal process here that you're going to be put through. With regards to your right to have an attorney represent you, I want to make sure you are highlighted that you do have a right to have an attorney represent you on these matters. If you can't afford one, the court would appoint one for you at the public's expense if you need a court-appointed lawyer because you're indigent. Indigency means basically that you don't have enough money to hire your own lawyer. If you want to go that route, there's a form over at the jail. One of the turnkeys will give it to you. Make sure you fill it out completely. It will be reviewed. And if you meet the requirements of indigency, a lawyer will be appointed for you. If you have the money, you can hire whoever you want. Do you understand how that works? Yes. All right. Those are your rights to an attorney. Now, what I'm going to do next, ma'am, is I'm actually going to read over the charges here so you fully understand with what you're charged today. Specifically, it's alleged in the complaint that's been filed here by the St. Clair County Prosecutor's Office. Specifically, here, you're alleged back on May 26, 2015, in the city of Port Huron, St. Clair County, Michigan, you're charged under count one with what's commonly known as homicide slash open murder. Basically, it's alleged you did murder Mackenzie Lynn Mason. That was true. It would be contrary to Michigan law, MCL 750.316. Penalty for that would be a felony. It's life. DNA to be taken upon arrest. Count two, they're charging with a crime called torture. It's alleged you did with the intent to cause cruel and extreme physical or mental pain and suffering to inflict great bodily injury or severe mental pain or suffering upon a Mackenzie Lynn Mason, a person within your custody or physical control. Contrary to Michigan Compiled Law 750.85, that is also a felony, ma'am, punishable by up to life or any term of years. A consecutive sentence may be imposed under Michigan Compiled Laws if the assault was committed in a place of confinement. Count three, again, torture. It's alleged you did with the intent to cause cruel or extreme physical or mental pain or suffering, inflict great bodily injury or severe mental pain or suffering upon a Bacalay, or Michaela, excuse me, Michaela Marie Mason, a person with whom you're custody or physical control. If that was true, again, it'd be contrary to Michigan compiled laws. It'd also be a felony, life or any term of years. A consecutive sentence may be imposed, again, under Michigan compiled laws if the crime was committed in a place of confinement. Count four, child abuse, first degree. It's alleged you did knowingly or intentionally cause serious physical or mental harm to a child. If that was true, it'd be contrary to Michigan compiled laws. It's a felony, life or any term of years. And then count five, child abuse, first degree. It's alleged you did knowingly or intentionally cause serious or physical or mental harm to a child, contrary to Michigan compiled laws. Again, the penalty would be life for any term of years. Upon conviction of a felony or attempt to commit a felony, the court shall also order law enforcement to collect DNA identification for profiling purposes. Now, ma'am, those are the charges that you face here today. First, do you understand the nature of the charges as well as the maximum penalties you could face? Yes. All right. Now, with regards to these matters, by the serious nature of them, I'm going to stand you mute. I'm going to enter a not guilty plea for you here today. And uh, at this point, what I have to do is we have to discuss uh, what bail or bond is going to be imposed upon you at this point. And to that end, I have a prosecuting attorney here that wants to, I believe, make a presentation. And uh, I'm going to hear from her first, and then I'm going to ask you some questions before I make a determination on the bond or bail. So with that, uh, Ms. Armstrong, Place your on Armstrong on behalf of the people. All right. What do you want to tell them? Your Honor, pursuant to MCR 6.106 subsection B, uh, we are asking the court to deny pretrial release because this is a defendant who is charged with murder. In making that assessment, the court, I believe, will find proof that the defendant's guilt is evident or the presumption is great. Just um, a brief background on some of the circumstances of this particular case. These five counts do involve one children, Mackenzie, who did pass as a result of these crimes, as well as her sister, Michaela, who is three years old and still hospitalized. Your Honor, particularly as it relates to Mackenzie, she is a child who was five years old, who was severely malnourished. Um, she suffered profound um, medical trauma as a result of neglect that showed weeks, if not months, uh, of neglect and I would suggest purposeful withholding of nourishment as well as any medical attention she may have needed. She had bruises in varying stages of healing. She uh, was suffering a severe infection to her genitalia and she also had a profound case of pneumonia at the time of her death. 
Your Honor, she, my understanding from the medical examiner, weighed 25 pounds. Her sister, Michaela, uh, is three years old, is, as I'd indicated, still hospitalized. She was immediately transported and obtained medical attention after Mackenzie's uh, uh, medical situation on Tuesday night. Um, they have also indicated that her condition was life-threatening as a result of the fact that she has also been severely malnourished, uh, and I would suggest uh, it demonstrates a purposeful, uh, systematic manner in which both of these children were treated. Um, there were two other children in the house who were not in the same condition. Uh, I think the court ultimately will find that those two children are the biological child uh, of this defendant. However, Michaela and Mackenzie were not. Um, Your Honor, uh, finally, I think that the evidence will demonstrate that there was a delay in seeking medical attention for Mackenzie on Tuesday night. The indicators are that her death actually happened prior to the time of the call uh, for assistance from EMS, that there was a, a significant length of time after, in which Mackenzie was not, um, uh, no one obtained medical assistance or intervention on her behalf, and ultimately she passed. Um, Your Honor, but for that circumstance, I think we would have two homicides here because Michaela's condition was also very severe. Given that, I would uh, indicate I do believe the court can find and should find that defendant's guilt is evident. Uh, the presumption is great. There is a substantial likelihood of conviction on all of the crimes charged, and for that reason we are asking the court to hold the defendant without bond. All right, ma'am, you've just heard what the prosecutor said here concerning the allegations against you. Uh, I'm going to ask you some specific questions, but I'm just going to remind you of your right uh, to remain silent. I don't want you to say anything incriminate yourself concerning these matters as I ask you questions here in open court. Specifically, I'm looking to determine your appearance in court and the likelihood that you'll ever come back if you're ever given a bond here concerning these charges. Uh, Ma'am, is there anything you want to tell me about your uh, coming back to court or why I should see you again if I gave you a bond? No, I'm, I'd like, I've asked for an attorney. I would like to fight with this there is no truce in most of what was said. I've given the detectives everything, every detail of what happened that day, that there was no intentions on any of this. All right. Well, like I said about the attorney point, at this point what I'll do is I'll, if you've got the money, obviously you can hire your own lawyer. I will tell you that uh, if you don't, make sure you fill out the form. The court will process the form for a court-appointed lawyer immediately. However, based upon what I've heard here today, uh, the court rule concerning the holding you at this point without bond or bail is appropriate. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to set a uh, probable cause hearing for you. That's going to occur in my court rule. The date of that is going to be, and only what date are we going to use for the probable cause hearing? All right, that's going to happen June 9th, ma'am, in my courtroom, 2015. That's a probable cause hearing. Like I said, you'll have an attorney appointed for you if that's the route you go for, to help you with that hearing. I'm also going to set the preliminary exam at the same time uh, if that is necessary. The preliminary exam, the, if that's set the 9th, the preliminary exam is going to occur on June 16th, the week after, 2015. That's also going to be, well, I'll put that in the afternoon at 1 p.m. The other one's going to be at uh, 9 in the morning, probable cost hearing. That's what we're going to do here today. You're going to be held without bond. You're all set, ma'am. We'll see you here in my courtroom on the 9th. Thank you, Your
Good morning, sir. What's your name? Andrew Mason. All right. This is my court file, 15P03373, People of the State of Michigan versus Andrew Mason. With regards to this matter, sir, today you're here for what's called an arraignment. And at that arraignment, we're going to go over a couple of things. The first thing I'm going to do is go over your rights. The second thing I'll do is go over the charges you face. Specifically concerning your rights, I want to make sure that you reviewed a sheet of paper over at the jail with your rights on it. Uh, have you done that? Yes, I have. All right. Did you sign that sheet? Did you feel you understood the rights that were listed there? Yes. All right. I want you to keep those rights in mind as we go through this process of the arraignment today. I also want you to understand that those same rights apply to the remaining court proceedings that you have here in the court system. I'm also going to highlight for you you have a right to have an attorney represent you in all of this. If you can't afford one, I will appoint one for you at the public's expense if you're indigent, which means you don't have enough money to hire your own lawyer. Now, with regards to that, if you do have the money to hire a lawyer, you're free to do that as well. If you want to get a court-appointed lawyer, though, I'm going to suggest to you that you talk to one of the turnkeys there. There's forms over at the jail to get that to you. Make sure you fully complete it and turn it in. If you meet the requirements of indigency, we'll appoint a lawyer to help you out with all of this. Do you understand that right, sir? Yes. All right. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually read over the charges that you're facing here today. And to do that, I'm actually going to review the complaint that's been filed by the St. Clair County Prosecutor's Office against you. Specifically, sir, the charges are as follows. It's alleged in the, the felony complaint here that on or about May 26, 2015, in the city of Port Huron, St. Clair County, Michigan, you're charged here under count one with what's commonly known as homicide, open murder, statutory short form, specifically uh, sir, it's alleged you did murder Mackenzie Lynn Mason. That was true and be contrary to Michigan law. That it's a felony matter. Maximum penalty for that is up to life in the prison system. Also, DNA is taken upon arrest. Count two, torture. It's alleged you did with the intent to cause cruel or extreme physical or mental pain and suffering. Inflict great bodily injury or severe mental pain or suffering upon a Mackenzie Lynn Mason, a person within your custody or physical control. Contrary to Michigan compiled laws, that also would be a felony, sir, life or any term of years. A consecutive sentence may be imposed under Michigan law if the assault was committed in a place of confinement. Count three, torture. It's alleged to do with the intent to cause cruel and extreme physical or mental pain and suffering, inflict great bodily injury or severe mental pain upon a, upon a Michaela Marie Mason, a person within your physical control or custody. That was true. It also would be contrary to Michigan compiled laws. It's a felony. Life for any term of years. A consecutive sentence may be imposed again under Michigan law if the assault was committed in a place of confinement. Count four charges that child abuse first degree. So that you did knowingly or intentionally cause serious physical or mental harm to a child. If that was true. It would be contrary to Michigan compiled laws. It's a felony up to life for any term of years. Count five, child abuse first degree. It's alleged you did knowingly or intentionally cause serious physical or mental harm to a child. Again, if that was true, contrary to Michigan compiled laws, it would be a felony up to life or any term of years. Upon conviction of a felony or attempt to commit a felony, the court shall also order law enforcement to collect DNA for profiling purposes. Now, sir, those are the charges that have been laid against you. Specifically, do you understand the nature of those charges as well as the maximum penalties you could face as a result of a conviction for those? Yes. All right. At this point, sir, I'm going to stand you mute, enter a not guilty plea for you. Now, the next part of what I'm going to do here is I'm going to talk a little bit about bail or bond. And to that end, uh, I have an assistant prosecutor here, uh, and I'm going to hear from them first as to what their position is concerning your bail or bond. And then I'm going to come back to you, and we're going to talk for a few minutes about what you want me to do. And specifically, uh, Ms. Armstrong, do you want to place your appearance on the record? Mona Armstrong, on behalf of the people. All right. What do you want to tell me here today? And, Your Honor, again, just to briefly restate, we are asking that the court hold this defendant without bond pursuant to MCR 6.106, subsection B, based upon the fact that he is charged with murder, and we would submit the court should find that proof of the defendant's guilt is evident or the presumption is great. Uh, again, to briefly restate, you have two victims in this particular case, Mackenzie, who is the victim of the homicide, who did pass, um, and uh, based upon the evidence as we understand it at this point, there is a history of severe malnourishment. 
She was severely um, neglected to the point that it's clear this was a systematic exclusion of food and nourishment, as well as general uh, basic needs in terms of uh, the fact that she had uh, an extreme uh, infection to her genitalia. She also had numerous injuries in various stages of healing, uh, Your Honor, and ultimately I think the evidence demonstrates that this was a child who was suffering. Um, as well as the fact that uh, this time frame would have been anywhere from weeks to months that she would have been in the state. Um, Your Honor, again, uh, the other victim of torture and child abuse is her three-year-old sister, Michaela, who was also rushed for medical uh, attention, in fact, transported to Children's Hospital in Detroit due to the extensive uh, uh, condition that she was in. Um, a life-threatening condition as a result of the fact that she also was suffering from severe malnourishment. Um, Your Honor, Michaela weighed 17 pounds. She's three years old on Tuesday night uh, and, and, again, is still hospitalized as a result of her condition. Um, Your Honor, based upon the length of time that this um, must have been occurring, the fact that there are two other children in the home who are not in this condition in any way, shape, or form, are not malnourished, um, who happened to be uh, the biological child of the co-defendant in this case. Michaela and Mackenzie are the uh, biological children of this defendant, uh, and they also have a one-year-old child in common. Uh, given all of the evidence as uh, I submit the court will um, uh, be presented, at this point I believe guilt is evident. The presumption is great. There is a substantial likelihood of conviction. I'm asking the court to hold this defendant without bond. Sir, you've just heard what the prosecuting attorney's position is concerning bail and bond. I'm going to caution you, sir, before we go much farther, because I'm going to ask you what your position is or that concerning bail and bond, but I will just caution you, you do have a right not to incriminate yourself, and I'm not really asking you about the facts of the case, or what I'm asking you is what reasons you think that I should consider concerning the issuance of a bail or bond here, specifically your likelihood to return to my courtroom if I was to let you out here based on the serious natures of the charges against you. So is there anything you want me to consider, anything you want to say, uh, knowing your rights here today, before I uh, have to make a decision on your bail or bond? No, sir. All right. Based upon the evidence that's been presented here to me, the arguments that have been made, I believe that the record is clear that the court rules have been satisfied concerning my decision here at this point, based upon what I've heard to hold you without bail or bond. I am going to set a preliminary exam for you and a probable cause hearing in the short term. The probable cause hearing is going to be within 14 days of my court. It's going to occur on June 9, 2015. The time for that probable cause hearing is going to be at 9 o'clock in the morning here in this courtroom. Also, at the same time, I'm going to set what's called a preliminary exam hearing. That would be if necessary. That will occur on that same date of June, well, it's going to be on June 16, the following seven days afterwards and that's going to occur at 1 p.m. on that day. Now, sir, again, if you want to get a court-appointed lawyer, I strongly suggest you call the paperwork ahead of time and get that turned in at the, at the jail. We'll get that over to the court system, and we'll do it. If you're going to hire your own lawyer, I suggest you do that as well so that you have counsel to help you out with this matter when we get back to court here on the 9th. Do you understand all of that? Yes, sir. Okay, and that's what we're going to do today. You're all set. We'll see you in my courtroom on the 9th. Thank you, Ron. You're welcome.